Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I appreciate you. Let's get into it. I know the last... 72 hours now it was 48 hours yesterday but 72 hours our country has been embroiled in a type of discussion that could have potentially gone completely haywire the jj banda effect had the butterfly effect and it could have potentially spiraled out of control uh, for those of you that do not know the story, let me bring you up to speed very quickly. About 72 hours ago, we woke up to the news that Petauke, a member of parliament, a young man by the name of J.J. Banda, had gone missing. And the story was that his car had been found abandoned. The windscreen was broken. There was a note allegedly in the car that, that said, Dear Zambians, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. And apparently was signed by him. And for two days, for 48 hours, people like former President Lungo, Edith Nawakwi, uh, Savoy the Stripper, the little man Munir Zulu, Emmanuel Mwamba, all of these characters went into overdrive to conclude and to assume that the state had abducted and kidnapped J.J. Banda. They stood on the highest mountaintop, including that woman from Mfue, that MP from Mfue, the female MP from Mfue, stood on the highest mountaintop, and they announced, they declared, and they shouted, the state has something to do with J.J. Banda's disappearance. If he is not found, we will declare war on the establishment. The MP from Mfue was so bold as to even to suggest that this was now a tribal war, that it was against Bembas and Tongas and Easterners. She began to spew the same tribal rhetoric that Bachishimba Kambuili was spewing, was spewing in 2021. She was spewing the same tribal hate, the same tribal debauchery that they were spewing in Rwanda over that 100-day period where Hutus and Tutsis were in a conflict that saw multiple millions of Rwandese being killed because of their tribe. Valungu very quickly rushed to Ibex police station and he said, I know J.J. Banda's in there. He said, we know. Former President Lungu said, we know you're holding him. We got your pick. We got your sussed out. We know the police are, are conducting some type of clandestine operation. We know you have abducted uh, J.J. Banda, we know he's in your custody, and we know exactly where he is. Balungu led a band of vagabonds, thugs, crooks, and, and, and imbeciles to Ibex Hill Police Post, fully convinced that J.J. Banda was in the police holding cells. Well, it came out that that wasn't the truth. A few days later, we woke up to the news that old J.J. Banda had been found. Miraculously, he just appeared out of thin air. And, and the moment J.J. Banda was declared discovered, and not only discovered, but alive, 
All of these guys, Valungu, the little man, Munir, the little man, Savoy, the stripper, Nawakwi, the wicked witch of wherever the hell she's from, all of them were disappointed when they heard that J.J. Banda was alive because it simply said that they had to re-strategize and rethink their strategy. They were hoping that J.J. Banda would have been found dead because it would have fallen straight into their lap and they would have led the narrative that, oh, the state has killed J.J. Banda. Oh, it's enough. Oh, this administration is this, that, and the other. If we don't stop this Hagainda Hijilema, well, you and I are next. Oh, they done killed J.J. Banda. But oh, it wasn't to be. J.J. was found alive, and he all right. There's nothing wrong with him. And then they, and this is what they said when they're, oh, J.J. Banda's been found alive, but he's in bad shape. Oh, he's in bad shape. The man is standing on the precipice of death. He's at death's door. The man was beaten within an inch of his life. And then they show us pictures of J.J. Banda. And he looked like he was in a scuffle with his wives. That's what it looked like. It looked like he had an argument with his, one of his wives. It didn't look like he had been beaten to a pulp. It didn't look like J.J. Banda was standing on the precipice of death. It didn't look like J.J. Banda had been beaten within an inch of his life. No, no. It simply looked like J.J. was in a scuffle with some woman on the side of the river somewhere. And yet here it is. These guys are on a rampage to create a false narrative that lends to this skewed idea that somehow in their minds they think we can we can cause civil unrest this is the thinking of the pf you see this is the thinking of the slave mind this is the thinking of valungu and group this is the thinking of stripper savoy this is the thinking of that little man manir this is the thinking my brothers and sisters of that woman that MP female woman from Fui who declared war and who was sure that this whole thing was going to spiral out of control. But it was not to be. J.J. Banda was found. Now they have to rechange their narrative. But they're running around like headless chickens. They're groping in the dark. Edith Nawakwe. She went on air and she said the most outlandish. And let me say this, and I said it yesterday and I'll say it again today. I have never in my life, I've lived 55 years. I've been a citizen of this great country for 55 years. I've seen every single president from Dr. Kenneth Kaunda to the current. I have brushed shoulders with every single president from one to seven. But in my entire life, I have never seen a woman that is so steeped in hate, treachery, debauchery as Edith Nowakwe. This woman has tried everything within her power to destroy Hakainda Hichilema to the point where I wouldn't be surprised if she walked up and did something horrible to him. And Edith Nowakwe, a few days ago, she just went on rampage. Oh, she said the most horrible thing. She made the most outlandish, the most ridiculous, the most despicable accusations that you've ever heard in any political sphere. And now here it is. Now remember, this is the same Edith Nowakwe a few years ago that was in the middle of that Hatembo scandal, Hatembo saga. Oh, she said so many things. No, H.H. -H abducted these people. H.H. -H stole this land. H.H. -H did this, that, and the other. She escaped the noose of justice in those days because it was PF that was in power. But I can tell you now, with this new J.J. Banda saga and the things that she has insinuated, she's not going to get away with it. She's not going to escape this noose. And what I find so interesting, what I find curious is that, and she does the same thing that Tishimba Kambwili used to do. 
You remember when Bakam Bwili would come on air, he would say the most bold things. He would say the most, the most outlandish. He would make the most outlandish statements. And then when he was cornered, all of a sudden, he would feign sickness. All of a sudden, he would feign disease. All of a sudden, he would faint miraculously. He would just pass out. Say, oh, Lord, I'm not feeling too well. I know I said those crazy things, but Lord, have mercy. I can't see. I can't feel my hands. I can't feel my feet. I can't walk. I'm about to pass out. It's blurry. I can hardly think straight. Oh, somebody, please help me. I, I, but two days ago, he was on air saying the most ridiculous things. Now, Wakwi does the same thing. She made those crazy outlandish uh, 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 statements. And then all of a sudden, when they went to pick her up, oh, I need to go to India for treatment. Oh, I got a condition. Oh, I can't see straight. Oh, somebody hit me. My, my, my vision's blurry. Well, you should have thought of all of that before you went out there and made those crazy statements. Guys, you must understand this, and let me make it very clear to you. This whole idea that the opposition, the patriotic front, Walungu's group of vagabonds, crooks and despots, Neanderthals and misfits, and deplorables, might I add, this idea that they, that they fostered that J.J. Banda was abducted by the state is ridiculous. For what? What would the motive be? Why all of a sudden would J.J. Banda become a person of interest? Why would the state bend over backwards, according to you, abduct J.J.? For what? If J.J. Banda was to be picked up by the police, all the police have to do is go pick him up. The only thing that J.J. Banda is known for is when he ambushed that police station. The only thing J.J. Banda is known for is when he urinated in the mouth of that journalist. So if, in fact, the police were going to apprehend J.J. Banda because of his past crimes and misdemeanors, all they had to do is just go over there and apprehend him. All they have to do is just go there. That's all they had to do. Why all of a sudden would the state, in a clandestine way, like this is Mission Impossible or something, that this is some type of espionage, why would the state, what motive would the state have to abduct? according to you, J.J. Banda. And let me also hasten to add, let me say this. The opposition, uh, the, the PF in particular, led by Valungu, they have created this misleading narrative that anything that the police do is defined as abduction. Bane, when the police come to get you, rightly or wrongly, they are arresting you. They are apprehending you. But according to the PF language, any officer in uniform that comes to approach you, kuribena ni abduction. Yo, why did you abduct kuno? Well, when you do the crime, of course the police is gonna the police are gonna have to come over and talk to you. They're gonna talk to you, and they will arrest you. They will apprehend you, and they will question you. I'm avoiding using the word interrogation because to the PF, interrogation means torture, which isn't always the case. Yes, those things do happen. They do happen. But you must understand that it's not always the case. When the, imagine for, you know, you, know what the you know what the PF are trying to suggest? The PF are trying to suggest that we should live in a, in a society that is void of the police. Imagine for a moment if we didn't have the police. You ever see that film Purge? You ever see that film Purge? Law, no law enforcement. No law. No parameters. No rules. That's the environment the PF want to live in. An environment where there are no rules. An environment where the lines are blurry. An environment where there are no, no statutes. No, no. The late, great Manawasa used to say, we live in a country of laws, not of men. 
So my take on all this issue, this, this J.J. Banda thing, is there's a lot going on there. Something's going on there, boy. Something's going on. And, and let me conclude by saying this. And, of course, we, don't, we won't know what that is until the police tell us. You know, and this is why I found it curious that when J.J. Banda was discovered alive, the first line of defense, the first, the first point of contact should be the police. Who do you want it to be? You want Barungu to interrogate the Uyundanyu, Uyu J.J. Banda. That's what you want? Yeah, Because I saw in social media the sisters saying, no, they pulled out an injection. No, don't touch my, my brother. No, but who do you want to, to interview J.J. Banda in against the backdrop of this, this incident? This incident that could have potentially erupted this country into chaos. Not that J.J. Banda is important, but the implications behind the political propaganda that surrounded this issue could have potentially harmed this nation. It, against that backdrop, who do you think the police should speak to? Who do you think J.J. Banda should speak to? You think he should speak to, to Walungu and the company? No, man. The police. The police. They will give us the information. The PF are not a, a law enforcement wing. The UPND are not a law enforcement wing. UCA is not a, a law enforcement wing. UCA is simply a bunch of guys that have huddled together who don't even know what the hell they want. So don't. Don't sit there all pious and talk about uh, uh, why did the police go after? Well, because the police is the first point of contact. They will give us the information. And let me tell you, if J.J. Banda doesn't tell the truth concerning this issue, because already there's something fishy going on here. If J.J. Banda doesn't tell the truth, he's going to jail. All right, let me make one last point, and this is the point. Valungu and group have realized that tribalism is a tool that they want to use to regain political power. This is very important. This is extremely important. They are trying to use tribe to drive a wedge between us as Zambians, and it's all for political expedience. of things it has no place in real politics tribalism Balungu during the run up to the 2021 elections Balungu sent Chishimba Kambwini to proselytize the Zambian people into buying into this idea that somehow this Tonga named Hagainde Ichidema there was something inherently wrong with him. Walungu himself is on record saying, no, surely we're going to have a Tonga president, but not the current aspirant. In their minds, HH was anathema. In their minds, HH was a reject. But the Zambian people stood up and said, no, nah, no, nah. the very stone, the very cornerstone that you have rejected is the one that we are going to embrace. And because of that, the PF are angry. They are furious. That's all it is. It's all, it's all about political ego. It's not about service. Why do you think Balungu wants to come back to power? Why do you think he wants to regain power? It's because his ego is bruised. It's got nothing to do with service to the Zambian people. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with make, making Zambia great again. It's got nothing to do with putting our feet on a higher ground. It's got nothing to do with bettering the lives of Zambians. Nay, my brothers and sisters, it has everything to do with a bruised ego regaining power at any cost so that he can show HH who's really boss, if Valungu, which can never happen because we don't have a history of that, Zambians are not wired that way. If Valungu were to come back to power, which is an impossibility because we're not wired that way, do you know what his number one agenda would be? Kill HH. Do you know that? 
What, you don't know that? What, are you so dwanzy that you don't know that? If Lumbu were to come back to power, which is an impossibility, because the Zambian people have moved on, the Zambian people have raised the bar of leadership, the Zambian people have decided to do better. When you know better, you do better. We've done better. But if he were to come back, the number one priority would be to eliminate HH. Do you not know that? Isn't it obvious? It is obvious. And then these PF vagabonds would run amok. This country would be destroyed. But all the Zambian people have seen it. We've seen through you. We've sussed you out. The Zambian people know better. We know better because we chose better. So this tool of tribalism is not going to work. It didn't work during the run-up to the 2021 elections where Chishimba Kambwili crisscrossed this nation, walking to and fro on the face of the earth like the devil, preaching this message of hate. Didn't work then. It's not going to work now. Balungu has sent the stripper, Savoy. Balungu has sent P.F. Mfue, MP, that girl, what's her name? I forget her name. Who says, no, there are more bimbas than them. How many bimbas are there? In 2024, you're talking like that? What do you think this, 1921? No, man. This is Zambia. One Zambia, one. It doesn't matter how many bimbas there are. It doesn't matter how many Tongas there are. It doesn't matter how many Easterners there are. At the end of the day, when the dust settles and the dew dries, we are one nation under God. But you don't like that, do you? It doesn't play into your hands, does it? You hate that. You hate unity. You hate cohesiveness. You would rather see this nation fall apart at the seams for your own political expedience. But I tell you what, you're not going to get away with it. You know why? Because we're not going to let you. We won't let you. <laughs> we won't. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. All right. Well, I'll share that. We have been speaking for 25 minutes. It's a long time. Long time. They can't win. Watching from Perth. One nation under God. You ain't lying. Yes. Yeah, that girl from, from Mfue. You know that PF member of parliament from Mfue. The, 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 that young girl that was calling for war. And, and don't downplay this issue. It has now become a serious matter because you made it a serious matter. You predicated your whole message on the hope that J.J. Banda would be found dead so that you can call the nation to arms and say, the state has killed J.J. Banda. You and I are next. Let us rise up against this administration. That's what you were planning. You didn't plan on the fact that he would be found alive. Now you're upset that he's alive. When you heard that J.J. Banda was alive, many of you PF guys said, oh, rats. Man, I was hoping he'd be dead. That way we could push this narrative that we can ra raise our people, uh, call civil unrest. Oh, now we can't do it. Homeboy's alive. I mean, what are you going to do with a guy that's alive? He's worth more to us dead than he's alive. Oh, Lord, tell you what. Well, you can't always get your way. That's what you guys are thinking. <laughs> you jokers. Anyway. All righty. Thank you for watching. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Bye. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.